This episode of the Boss Rush Podcast is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support the Boss Rush family of podcasts, head to BossRush.net or our Patreon at patreon.com slash BossRushMedia. Thanks for helping us build something better. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Boss Rush Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deergan. Alongside me, as always, is the PC Muscle Race himself, Laurent Dawkins. Yay, hey, what's poppin'? Hello, Laurent. What's up, man? It's good to see you. Yeah, man. Good to see you. Mm-hmm. This this wonderful Wednesday evening. This is wonderful Wednesday evening. Yeah. <laughs> you know why it's wonderful? Why is it wonderful? Oh, I got, I know why it's wonderful. It's wonderful because Stephanie's back. That's why it's wonderful. You're supposed to say, why is that? <laughs> yeah, you stole no, his thunder, no, no. Leron. Uh, yeah, exactly. That was my plan. That was my plan. <laughs> we have the uh, the grand return of the mad pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klimov. The obligatory uh, estrogen presence in the group. Hello. Yeah, last week it was Matt. Mm. He was kidding. an estrogen, though. <laughs> oh, man. Also, here's PK Power, Pat Klein. Bring in your daily dose of testosterone. Mm. And that's, dirty jokes. That's what you are, Pat. You're you're the epitome of testosterone. and That's right. Man. When you uh, look up man in dictionary, you see a picture of me. Yeah. Three pictures of <laughs> you, actually, and doing <laughs> standing, sitting, and Pooping. gaming, I guess. <laughs> or gaming Sounds while like pooping. That. Oh man, that's the I've best. I've done that before. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best. Man, I remember when I was playing Destiny on the Vita remote play Ooh. in the bathroom at our old apartment. It was awesome. And your wife would be like, "What she are you doing old. in there?" She, she was like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> Nothing." I'm doing are a playing video up. games again? <laughs> man, you could be normal and masturbate like everyone else. <laughs> no. Right. <laughs> man. Good times, good times. Uh, remember that. Remember that. Uh, that GameCube ad where the 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 with the WaveBird ad where the they were the ad was at the point of view from the bathroom and they had the door half shut but the mirror on the door was showing the TV with the GameCube. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good ad. Yeah, it was a great ad actually. Oh, I miss those days. Now you just take your Switch in there and shut the door and hide. Nintendo really should get on a commercial with that. You can hide unless yeah. you have kids. I don't know. I feel like my kid still doesn't respect the fact that I'm in the bathroom with the door closed. Mm, nope. Nope. My kid, my my daughter bangs on the door and she's like, she's like, I need to go. And I'm like, so do I use the other one. And then she'll just open the door anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, thanks for knocking. Yeah. Good times. Kids. Am it's I right? All right. Eventually they'll get grossed out. So it's just a matter of time. Hmm. Yeah, good. Good. Anyways, uh, everybody's week going good. Great. Yes, I'm Wonderful. wrapped up in my nostalgia blanket. Ooh, Buster. blockbuster blanket. That's I, fun. I finally reached that age where I'm buying everything that reminds me or is from the Everything, 90s. Everything's vintage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not yes. good, guys. It's kind of an addiction now. <laughs> Yeah, I've been looking. I've been looking at a lot of like Ninja Turtle toys, like original. Like that NECA made this uh, line of Ninja Turtle toys that are from the original movie. They have the twelve inch ones, uh, and then they have the seven inch inches. ones. Gosh, yeah, it's too much. That's yep. why you get the seven inch one. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because it's cheaper. <laughs> uh, they're still like forty bucks a piece, though the seven inch ones. The twelve inch ones are like one hundred and fifty to two hundred, depending on which turtle you get. Don't even bother getting Raph with a trench coat, okay? Because you're going to be making a mortgage payment on that guy. Raph with a trench coat. Listen, I need to Raph. share this. Yeah, what? Raph from the from the movie. Remember when he puts a trench coat on and tries to go see a movie, and then he fights. Casey Lots of sigh. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that part. Yeah, and then my parents took me to go see see that movie in the theater, the first one, and I was like. I don't know, four or five or six or something. And Raph says damn twice. And then, uh, you know, 
And then they she, curse. My mom was like, "Oh, you truck. can't watch this movie. They curse in this movie." I was like, "Too bad. We're already here. <laughs> already here. Watch." Wait, it. It, wait. Is your is your mom one of those one of those people that that clutches their pearls when um when when there's curse words on something? Yeah, but then she turns around and uses them, uses them all the time. So you know, uh, that's one of those, one of those things. Oh, this was a this was a terrible Monday, everybody. I have to I have to tell you this story, this sad sad story. Laurent already knows because he was on Pow Block this week, but the Browns lost their best player to a season ending injury. It's not that it sounds terrible. like the Jets. <laughs> He's our best player. Oh, that's his, true. His, you know what? Never mind. The Jets didn't lose their best player, did they? No. <laughs> yes, actually, they did. Aaron Rodgers, Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah, sure they lost they their best player. Yeah. Wait. Uh, <laughs> now, if you think you're from Wisconsin, no, nah, that's mm. that's rough, rough to say. Mm. You well, know, if you, you wasn't know. such a diva, we'd be more upset about it. But you know, is maybe he, you should just know. give up. I don't. I don't know. Is he such a diva? I really don't. He is a diva. Holy shit. <sighs> Kind of, yeah. Okay, kind of, yeah. Um, at least you didn't pay two hundred thirty million dollars for a less than mediocre quarterback who was suspended for a year and a half. Oh, oh, you still, you still on that tip, huh? Oh man, it's more than the tip, man. <laughs> it's like all the way in and swirling around, and then you'll never poop right again. It's fine. We only gave up three first round draft picks, and uh, you know. I don't know. I don't so, know, man. So what 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 came up what came up with that guy by the way? Like did did they ever prosecute his ass? Nope. Nope. Is he still in the league? He's our quarterback. He's our starting quarterback. Oh, I oh, you know, the way you were saying this, I thought you were saying it was like his ass was gone. No, he was suspended before we we traded three draft picks and then signed him to a five year two hundred and thirty million dollar deal, all guaranteed. Mm, mm. He's the first. He's the first player to ever have a fully guaranteed contract in the NFL. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Great. Okay. He's got to use okay. all that money to pay off these women he's allegedly sexually harassed. <laughs> oh man, it's a great time to be a Browns fan. Everybody, it's all right. We signed Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt today, and uh, he was our backup running back last year. And then we cut him because we weren't going to pay two top tier running backs. And uh, well, you know. Here we are. You are going to pay two top tier quarterbacks, running backs, sorry. running backs. I'm sorry, running yeah. backs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, sounds like sounds like a personal problem for your team, dude. I'm, I mean, it's been <laughs> it's been thirty years of this shit, it's, man. It's the Browns. <laughs> they they they're bad, and then Art Modell sells the team to, uh, or he he moves the team to Baltimore, and they become the Ravens. Then we come back in 1999 as an expansion team, and we've been terrible every year except for like two years, three years maybe. I, and and since 1999, we've made the playoffs three times, and we have only won one playoff game. And then we then we then we tra- then we got rid of Baker Mayfield, who's having a hell of a season this year, by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. And now we have uh, Deshaun Watson, who is uh, yikes. He was good before he took a year and a half off. <laughs> oh man, he's bad. Anyways, enough of this. isn't This isn't Boss Rush Sports Talk Radio here. Uh, oh, it's not. No, dude. He threw. He 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 threw two interceptions or two interceptions and threw one for a t- like. He scored more Pittsburgh uh, touchdowns than Pittsburgh did on Monday night. Okay. I'm, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the exact same line I used Monday night when you were going through all this. Cry about it. I am. I did. <laughs> when Nick Chubb got hurt, I was very upset. Oh man how how long is he projected to be out? Have they have the they whole said season yet? at least? Oh, he's done. He's he done. All four ligaments in his knee and dislocated it. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Because he because his shit kind of like 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 inverted on itself. Yeah. You want to see the video, Stephanie? It's really yeah. gnarly. Yeah, um, I've yeah. Rogers is Rogers is acting like he'll be he'll be back by by playoffs time. I know uh, he he's not going to be back. Like, 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 dude, like, 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 what, what, what's going on? Are you are you eating HGH? Like, what's going on? You thinking you're going to heal that fast? Yeah, I know, man. It was his uh, 
his his shaman told him so. Ah, like my like my best friend ruptured his Achilles tendon and it took him eight months mm-hmm. to get back to get back into to get back into into not so much fighting shape, just just like just like just like shape. Listen, anytime I hear any Achilles, any sort of injury, like oh, my skin crawls. Yeah, man, you would have as, you as uh, it should. You would have not liked the uh, Nick Chubb injury. He got hit in the knee with a helmet, and his leg literally bent the other way. Like yeah, it was so, right. it was so bad that ESPN refused to show the replay, and they don't care. Like it's ESPN, they don't care about injuries, right? That's how bad it was. Uh-huh. So, uh, speaking of injuries and my injury-ridden heart, uh, let's talk about what games we've been playing. Uh, Stephanie, you've been gone for a while. What are you playing? I got a lot done. So I beat the main line of Pikmin. Yes, I know there's other areas post, but I at least rolled credits. So since Pikmin then... Pikmin 4? Huh? Pikmin 4, yes, Pikmin sorry. Four? Pikmin 4. Nice. Yes, so I moved forth with lots of games. I beat Oxen Free 2, which may be something we talk about later. I also beat Beacon Pines, which also might be something we talk about later. I started A Space for the Unbound. I am continuing Alan Wake, hoping to complete Alan Wake before Alan Wake 2. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, normally, I cannot handle scary games, but for some reason, with Alan Wake... Alan Wake's not a scary game. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank it's, you, Corey. It's a, thr- it's, a th- it's a thriller. Run. I don't think there's thrillers. Thrillers are scary. We yes. don't need it. Get that out of here. So, but uh, maybe maybe that's kind of the line it drew. Because whenever I was in a dark area and the shadows were like coming to get me, I don't know. I would just kind of run around them, flash them with a little, a little light, flash them. Well, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, so it's a lot of fun. I mean, the dodging mechanic, you know, it, it's not kind of, it's not the modern dodging mechanic. So just meaning like he doesn't run very fast. I'm used to games where you could like, yeah, dodge. he does not. He does not run fast. And Bro, he, the guys are uh, the guys are writer. Yes, I know. But like, athlete. usually you'd see like um, a stamina meter or something to tell like when you'll start not being able to run. So here I am sprinting and all of a sudden I hear, <gasps> <gasps> which is fine. <laughs> but like, there was no indicator of when he'd run out of stamina because I would use that if I'm getting ganged up by a bunch of shadow people. So like, if anything, it's just a, like a little frustrating. Um, but no, I'm, I'm enjoying the game. So, and I can imagine that Alan Wake 2 be, you know, will have more modern controls. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, I hope they take a page out of controls, controls. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to think so. We'll see. Fingers crossed. I'll temper my expectations. I think I think with this modern era, right, and especially when they're in the set in the same universe, I bet mm-hmm. I'm guessing they're going to try to unif- unify their controls and stuff. I mean, I know Alan Wake is kind of like a exploration shooter type thing, but, con- you know, and control will use the buttons for the powers and stuff. But I think movement and all that kind of stuff will kind of be unified. Yes. Um, and then lastly, that I could talk a, probably a little bit more about uh, is I, I played and beat. Oh, Mel- hold on. Hold on. Did you put the lime in the coconut? I hate you. Mm. 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 Did, did you turn on the karaoke machine or, or not the karaoke? Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Yes. Great soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Whew. Um. <laughs> continuing. Where was I? Um, Lime in the coconut. Let's no, go. No, no, we're changing the subject. Uh, actually, M- melon journey, kind of in a si- similar but not similar, <laughs> different fruit. Um, I played melon journey, bitter uh, melon journey, bittersweet memories, um, which is put out by Xseed Games. And it has a very Game Boy look to it. I love the game. I think I had this conversation when um, Kim Chica or Jenny um, from uh, Kepler. Oh my, no, no, I know Kepler. I was trying to think Wholesome Games as Wholesome well. Games. She she was talking about it, and I and I fi- I finally 
you know, was able to play it. I was kind of in a mood for a Game Boy-like game. I had so much fun. I was clicking on every single thing, and I could tell it is a modern version of a Game Boy-like game because so much detail went into it. I could literally click on anything, and I'd get just some random, like, little line. It's The, the, the humor is very clever. Uh, it's it's a it's a quickish game. Didn't overstay its welcome. The soundtrack's pretty good, um, and I really loved it. I, I was pleasantly surprised. And the I bought it physical from Play Asia, so I also got the CD soundtrack for it, so which is great. So I loved I loved Melanger Journey. It was definitely a game that surprised me, and I will remember it fondly. How long was that game? I heard it's kind of on the short side. It is. I think it, for me it took like four hours. At, and I, I might even be exaggerating that. It's not very long at all. I might need to borrow that from you. Oh, absolutely. And that's me like literally clicking everything. And I mm-hmm. I, I was even... Because you have this main quest of finding your friend. Or oh, I bored Laurent to death. He just left. Yeah. <laughs> I bore... Um, but there's also side quests where each of each of the kind of NPCs that you make friends with has their own quest that you can help them with. So I was like trying to 100% it. But I think, you know, after you reach a certain point in the game, like because it goes by day, um, mm-hmm. if you miss it, then you can't really go back. So I missed one. Mm. I missed Aww. one. So. I hate it when that happens. And, and mm. I, I'm not a stickler for 100%ing things. So if I'm actually into getting all the side quests done i know that's a game that i like so i've played a lot um and then just super quick i I won't make it a a big show and tell but i i have been going on a retro spree and i've discovered perhaps the best retro gaming store in massachusetts because massachusetts doesn't have a lot of great retro gaming stores but it's called bowser's basement i think i've texted you guys a couple times i've frequented the store a little bit more than I should during my off period because what else am I going to do while I'm recovering and not allowed to do anything? It's spend money, right? So I've been mm-hmm. slowly collecting Game Boy games and N64 games because even though I know N64 games age horribly, that's my first console. So I'm just like married to that nostalgia. So I have Forsaken 64, Perfect Dark, Gauntlet Legends, Bomberman 64, a couple of them. And then for uh, Game Boy, I got Conker's Pocket Tales and Shadowgate Classic um, to start. So I'm slowly <laughs> collecting games that maybe I should not really be spending my money on. But I'm telling you, Corey, once that Pocket Analog gets restocked, mm-hmm. it looks amazing. You can play all like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. Mm-hmm. And, and just, then you can uh, buy you can buy adapters for it too that play Game Gear games. Uh, Neo. Neo Geo Pocket Color, and uh, there's another portable system that I'm not sure. Yeah, but. and the, you know it, it definitely makes the graphics just a little, you know, a little bit better. The sound a bit better. I'm like, and it's nice. It's very sexy looking. It's sleek. Mm-hmm. It's gorgeous. They make glow in the dark ones now. Yes, they're so. like the the latest one is translucent with glow in the dark stuff. But like, I, I not that you would know because you don't work for them or anything. But like, any any idea? when you think how long it takes for item restocks because I only waited like a week between when you first recommended it till when I decided to buy it. And within that one week, it went from pre-order to sold out. I'm like, what the yeah, they, they sell out pretty, pretty quickly uh, because it's, it's kind of a niche item. So they only right. order so many at a time. Fair. Um, but would you say they, they definitely will restock? It's not like maybe. I, not- I think so. I don't think it's because they, they've done like, uh, like an NES emulated thing, not an emulated, but it like, you know, you can, you can play your NES games on this thing with HDMI out and stuff. Right. And they've done a super Nintendo one and they've done a Genesis one. Uh, those are old and you can't find them anymore, but I, th- they restock as long as there's demand. Mm-hmm. And um, I figure the analog pocket is relatively on the newer side. So they, I, would... I think it came out last year, okay. early last year. So there's still they. I would think that there might still be demand then. Yeah, I would. I would say uh, they restock restock fairly regularly, not like every week or something, but every 
probably every couple months or so. Okay. Every I'll keep an eye on it. I didn't find a Twitter or X account on them, but. Yeah. Uh, I but forget anyway. what the company is called that makes them, but okay. I think it's, I think it's just called analog. It's called analog. Mm-hmm. And so I like it. Right. And I, I'm, I'm going to repeat it again. I, I wrote a, a top five um, new hardware for 2023 and the analog pocket is there. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's what I I've been. Re- Sorry. What? Oh, I was going to say, I really like the black one. I like the I like the black one, but uh, speaking of like the holy shit, it's two hundred and fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. It also comes with a dock, or you can purchase a dock to play them on your TV too, and it yeah. takes any uh, Bluetooth controller. But here's the thing: glow in the dark. The, I love the green glow in the dark, and the reason why I figured, okay, I'm definitely going to get this because I I like an idiot sold my functioning Game Boy Color thing. I was going to repurchase it with, with backlighting, but to purchase a Game Boy Color with backlight is like 170, 180 bucks at, on eBay. So I'm like, I might as well get an analog pocket for just a little bit more and be able to play yeah. all the games. So that's mm-hmm. kind of where I made that judgment call. I'm like, well, why buy a used old thing? And anyway, I'm rambling. Yeah. The cool so. thing about the analog pocket too is that it it comes with an SD card slot that you can load emulators onto so you could technically play like I think anything 16 bit or I don't I don't know if it goes up to 32 bit or like you know like PS1 arrow but you, it doesn't have an analog stick so I don't know if you would yeah or sh- shoulder buttons it has shoulder buttons right like two shoulder buttons maybe That's Game Boy Advance ish so so that's all I've been playing. Um, yeah, I've I've covered a lot of ground since I've been out, which is good. I, uh, as much as I did not want to be out while I was out, uh, half the reason was for the audience. I had some minor surgery and some recovery complications. Um, I'm sure Corey, you've talked about this before. Sometimes it's like we are on a gaming podcast, but sometimes it's frustrating when we don't have the time to game. Mm-hmm. So I'm really glad I was able to get 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 some out so yeah i've been thinking about taking a break at some point like a week or so um just because i don't know i mean i i mean i do this like three or four times a week right so i mean it's uh i don't know i just feel like i i kind of need one um so maybe i don't know we'll discuss that later it's not yeah. important um well since lebron disappeared uh, he says his internet went out sure it did his boyfriend That's came what over. What happened to mine? Um, uh oh, the aliens are coming. Yeah. Uh, Pat, what are you playing? I played a lot of stuff too, and I, I did it in a week because I have no life. Oh. Well. Yeah. But I suppose let's talk about some of the games I played. First off, uh, we did get game number thirty-two of forty, Beacon Pines which you can find out about our opinions in the next book club. Yeah, which will be out already for patrons by the time you hear this. Mm-hmm. So. But uh, needs to say, it may have been a good game. Maybe. Yes. Possibly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to be 100% sure, listen to the next book club. Mm-hmm. Yes. Other than that, I have been playing Lies of P. Mm. I just picked that up. The Bloodborne like, it is very very much like Bloodborne. Out of it's, it's definitely a Soulsborne game, but if you were to pit it against any of the uh, you know types, whether it be a Dark Souls or a Sekiro, it is definitely a Bloodborne. The game encourages you to be more offensive than defensive, mm-hmm. uh, mostly because when like if an enemy hits you, you lose some life, but you have a chance to regain it by hitting the enemy back. Mm. The downside is they also have that ability too. So oh. an enemy can regain some health if they manage to sm- get some good smacks in mm-hmm. on your side. Uh, but this game is absolutely incredible. For a company that's never made a video game, they made probably the closest thing to a FromSoft game out of anyone that's ever tried to make one of these type of games. Like this game is a marvel and it's you you could hardly tell that was from someone that was not from soft yeah 
It's um, uh, in fact, it sometimes it even exceeds in some parts. Uh, the one thing I absolutely love about this game is that it tells a it, it tells a story. You mm-hmm. know, it doesn't necessarily have to hide its story into the items, which it still does uh, to find out some uh, some of the more deeper lore. But you have characters, you have um, you have dialogue, you have cutscenes. Um, I mean, the game's just. It's good. Like I'm really enjoying it. Is it? it uh, oh, go ahead, Steph. Is it user friendly to those that aren't really good at Souls like games? No. Oh. <laughs> it is still very much a Souls game. It is can be pretty hard. Um, like I said, if you uh, if you played Bloodborne, you will definitely get like understand a little bit more with the mechanics of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's. This game does not do anything to make itself easier. Uh, basically, um, well, it might be a little bit easier if you like know how to use your abilities. Like the game is giving you plenty of opportunities to kind of customize how you want to play with your character. Um, like you can play with the sword, but eventually you can also get these grindstones that can give you elemental powers temporarily, rather than wasted on an item. Because the one thing I don't like, I always fear with the Soulsborne game is using items. Because if you use an item, but then you get your ass kicked, you just wasted the item. Mm-hmm. You'll never get the item back again. So it's like I, I don't want to. I fear wasting them. And this is coming from a guy that grew up playing retro RPG. So you, you hoard every single one of your items <laughs> until you get to the very last boss. That's how that works. Gotcha. But it's it's a great game. I've already uh, passed the parts of the demo. Uh, the demo originally had like three areas, and I have now uh, I've now beaten six bosses Ooh, so far. Okay. Uh, pretty cool one that tonight that looked like a walking furnace. Walking furnace. Yeah, like yeah, he had like uh like the furnace grill and like lava in his like stomach area but he also had like this giant hammer fist and another fist that uh like was a flamethrower let me tell you something bosses or en- or enemies that are of inanimate objects i think are creepier and scarier than what would be a living thing in my well, opinion there's definitely a lot of that because most of your enemies mm-hmm. are puppets Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So story wise, this is a game that takes uh that kind of takes the story of Pinocchio and uh turns it into a Souls game. So you you are the puppet, you don't are you're not necessarily called Pinocchio, but your father is Geppetto, that you're a creator. Um then there's Sophia who represents the blue fairy. Mm. Um Where's Jiminy and- Cricket at? Uh, his name is Gemini, and he is in a little lantern that you carry, Ooh. and he's kind of like a personal uh, computer and guide. Neat. Yep. And uh, he's got a really good voice uh, to him. Some of the other characters tend to be a little bit on the grading side. I just rescued this uh, this businessman that lays on his Italian accent like super thick it's like i'm beginning and welcome to my shop and then you know it's like it, it's a bit much like a low pitch mario Ooh. Hmm. but yeah it's it's a great game though i'm having a lot of fun uh it's free on game pass so like there really is no reason to not check it out i think there's uh demos on all the systems too Perfect. Uh, but it is it is a Souls game, so if you find yourself getting easily frustrated, this might not be the game for you. Oh, um, thank goodness for Game Pass, though. Yep. Uh, another, I I also picked up another game that uh, also lies heavily on the uh, uh, was a mis- uh, misogynist side. Uh, Blasphemous Two. Hmm. So. If uh, you never played Blasphemous 1, this is a game that is heavily inspired by the Spanish Inquisition. This game is, uh, like, the scenery kind of is, is inspired by Seville, Spain, uh, which is 
it's made by a Spanish team that actually is in Seville. So it's got a lot of very big Gothic cathedral uh, looks to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it. Very like really heavy on the Catholicism themes, um, especially uh, themes of like penitence and like uh, like trying to redeem yourself of your sins. Um, like atonement, and, like, atonements, mm-hmm. and just like everyone speaks in like gospel terms too so in terms of story it's really hard to understand and i even hear like blasphemous scholars have trouble understanding this uh the story in it but it's uh the imagery is very like holy shit like they got some creepy ass like catholicism imagery like brutally dark brutally like i don't know it's like righteous or like it's holy but it's not i don't know it's it's back in the time well not that that was the only time it happened where humans kind of people used religion or catholicism to kind of push push people upon their will and kind of take advantage of people and exploit them and it's super creepy right it's like all in the name of of, of, yep. Yeah. Oh gosh. But like pain and torture was a sign of how you were being forgiven of your sins was that you had to suffer. And that's a lot of the imagery in this is suffrage. Oof, that's sick. Um, oh, that's sick. Yeah. Like uh like in the very first one, your character when he grabs the his uh sword, mm-hmm. the sword its handle has thorns on it. And the thorns are like you know, attach themselves into his skin. Like that, Mm. that's kind of the first imagery of like suffering. Um, But you see all these other like miserable looking people, but they're happy to be miserable because they are repenting and stuff. The story behind it is uh, a, a special phenomenon called the miracle has blessed these people's lives. And the miracle is kind of what it sounds like. It's, you know, these, uh, like holy apparitions and like a phenomenon that has happened into this world. Uh, but on the negative side, a lot of people couldn't handle them and they turned into like the foreign monsters of various kinds and, um, you know, like inflict suffering, but these people are okay with the suffering because they see the holy. Um, and you play as the penitent one and your job is to basically get rid of the miracle because the miracle is like not really being helpful to people. It, it looks holy, but it's not like it's doing more harm than good. And so that happens in the first game. The second game is a direct sequel. Apparently, people like want to suffer still, and so they almost call back the miracle. Oh, they didn't learn their lesson the first time, huh? No, like, you know, they're finally, like, have the ability to, like, think for themselves and to, you know, do their own lives. But they they miss the miracles that the miracle performed. And they need something to outwardly, like, express their guilt and their suffering. Mm -hmm. So the miracle, in a sense, is coming back. And not only is it coming back, it's giving birth to something. Yeah, so it, it, it's like a form of this like gigantic heart in the sky um, that's hovering over this cathedral that has these three giant statues that lifted it up in the air. And so your first task is to find the three uh, regrets of the miracle. And by f- finding these regrets, you're essentially going to cause the cathedral to lower down to where you can get it. Um and it's uh yeah it's it, it's a lot of very interesting imagery um this one girl this one woman who gives you uh the ability to upgrade your health files kind of in a bloodborne way like she uh she freely wants to give up her blood and she has these little cherubims like flying over her the first time like when you meet her they're kind of like playing around with like the hem of her like sleeve like that's her sleeve of mm-hmm. her outfit and, you know, they're just kind of, like, pulling at it. And then once you get your first vial and you come back and visit her, they're already, like, peeling the skin off her arm. And, you know, you see this, like, 
bloody bony like hand while the cherubims are like holding around like the flap of like her skin oh that you know they that they're gently peeling off her Ooh. like it's, it's suffering imagery um gameplay this is a 2d metroidvania so <laughs> um but yeah i don't know what it is it's something about this history that i it's it's fascinating like just how dark something that we perceive as holy can be um and it, you, you definitely see a lot of the spanish influence in the game it's even included in the music with some very uh melodic uh guitar strumming mm -hmm. and other things like that's just it's beautiful it's pixelated but beautiful and it's uh I, i'm thoroughly enjoying it and I, and I love learning more and seeing what more creative grotesqueness that they can create with this game nice yeah i missed out on the in initial blasphemous train uh so that's why i'm kind of like a little reserved whenever i hear a another 2d metroidvania but i know that it was a relatively popular title when the first one came out so i'm on the fence yeah kind of start yeah just because it has those Castlevania vibes, mm. but it's like darker Christian Catholicism than yeah. Castlevania is. Gotcha. Um, other than that, I played some Star Ocean. I now know why the game, or not Star Ocean, Sea of Stars. <laughs> I now know why the game is called Sea of Stars. Hmm. Um, so I'm, I, I feel like I'm getting pretty close to the end. Uh, if I wasn't distracted by Liza P, I would hopefully have Sea of Stars done by this weekend. Wow. Let's see if I can get that, though. What number? How many hours have, have you put into it? Uh, about 25 right now. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, yeah. It's nice, though. That game, like, the story just gets better, and, you know, it, it's got great characters. And excellent music in each like level. There's really only one level I didn't care for, and I felt just because it went too long. But other than that, most of the levels are top notch. But yeah, DLC coming for that apparently next year. What? Yeah. Wow. Apparently you know they're. Oh, sorry, Steph. They, go. No, I was going to say that I could see that happening. Like I could see them continuing on, just because now what I know of what I know. Like, they could really do a lot with this game. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Did you see the messenger Easter eggs at all? Uh, there, There's a couple. Which one? I don't know. I was just asking if you've seen them. I didn't. I don't. Any specific one of the one. islands is actually the island that the messenger takes place in. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it, it's definitely a prequel. Mm -hmm. Not like fully directly involved with the messenger as far as I know. Yeah. But it takes place in the same world. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Um, yeah. I kind of, I wish I wouldn't have, but I kind of fell off Sea of Stars, uh, because I was, uh, I was also playing Beacon Pines. Um, I'm not going to say much, obviously, because of Book Club, and you guys can go listen to that, uh, at some point if you're a patron and it's already out. So, uh, but I want to say when you guys, like, we kind of, we have a group chat trying to talk like talking about, you know, what book club games we're going to pick and stuff. And when you guys mentioned that, I was like, let's pick something short because we're running out of time. And that was the game we settled on. And as soon as I started it up, I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to play this game at all. I just I don't want to play this. It's, it's, an, it's like a choose your own. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure game, but it's not because there's definitely like specific things you have to do. But like, you can't unlock those specific things you do unless you move forward. Uh, like, you know, the game works on these things called charms and it's kind of like fill in the blank with these charms. The charms have specific words on them and you have to use the right ones in the right chapters and stuff. Uh, but I really think I, once I like figured it out, I was invested in the characters. Like I was really invested in the story and the characters and, uh, I went from thinking I was going to hate it to it's probably going to be on my game of the year list at some point. Um, so it's uh, it's on Game Pass. It's also on Switch for 20 bucks. Uh, I would assume it's also on PlayStation. Uh, 
So it's it's really cute. I would say if you like if you like Telltale style games, almost, mm. I would say you will probably like this. Uh, it's not exactly a Telltale game, but it's I would say it's in that vein almost of like, you know, walking around looking for stuff, making choices. You know, you can go back and make new choices. Um, so I I definitely use the guide, though, because uh, I, I didn't feel like uh, <laughs> I don't know, not wasting time, but kind of wasting time trying to pick and choose which ones, which words were the correct ones. So uh, True Achievements has some great guides, by the way. Uh, so I, I played that this weekend. That's game number eight I've beaten this year, <laughs> which is uh, four nice. times as many as I beat last year. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, and then I got sucked back into Dreamlight Valley, but I won't bore anybody with that. So uh, pretty hard, actually. Um, is the beast uh, beating the beast expansion satisfying you? I haven't gotten that far yet because okay. you have to finish the main quest to uh, unlock that. And to finish the main quest, I have to level up other characters that are already on the island. And I, um, yeah, did not do that yet. Uh, so I'm I'm working my way there. But the new event, though, is Halloween themed. And you can make your house look like the Tower of Terror from <gasps> Disney World. You can uh, buy like the Haunted Mansion like set piece. There's a bunch of stickers and props and uh, there's the uh, costumes and stuff. So that's that's pretty cool, too. Uh, so. You know, I I gotta actually see like a legit haunted mansion. I saw the Muppet version, mm. <laughs> but I d- feel like that isn't what haunted mansion is actually like. You should uh you should watch the Eddie Murphy version. I haven't seen the new version, but you should watch the Eddie Murphy uh version. It's on Disney Plus if you have it already. Yes, I do. So, uh, the new one's coming to Disney Plus I think at the end of September. Which Just has like Rosario party. Dawson and Owen Wilson and other people. <laughs> so, by the way, speaking of Rosario Dawson, Ahsoka is amazing. The the the, the Star Wars show on Disney Plus is awesome. I've heard and I don't nice. I don't know anything about Rebels or Clone Wars or you know Boba Fett's Shoop Doop Shop, whatever else this is related to. Uh, this is but, related to the ex, uh, the extended universe, or um, also as well, because they introduced. There was originally a very awesome villain. Mm-hmm. The trilogy and, of books is amazing. Yep, uh, his name was Grand Admiral Thawne, and he was probably one of the most dangerous Imperials ever since Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people were upset that when Disney came in and said that it that universe doesn't exist anymore, like. A lot, a lot of these characters, people were upset that they probably wouldn't get to see light in the Disney universe, but they took that character specifically and brought him back mm-hmm. just because yeah. he was that awesome of a character. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, the Internet, they're like, you need to watch Clone Wars and Rebels to understand the story. And I'm like, I've never watched any of those. And within the first 10 minutes, I could tell you everything that's that happened. I'm like, you guys are dumb. The internet's dumb, guys. Fandom yeah. is dumb. So I hear that they do like flashbacks to Clone Wars and stuff. They so. do. Oh man, the la- the fifth episode, that flashback was awesome. Because uh, they spoilers, I guess, for Ahsoka episode five. So tune out for ten seconds, I guess. But they brought Hayden Christensen back to play Anakin. And they did a big Clone Wars flashback of him being uh, her master. Uh, and then there's this cool transition scene into him being Darth Vader. And then nice. they show this really cool lightsaber fight. Uh, it's it's like uh, they Ahsoka is in the, the world between worlds, which is like you're not dead, but you're not alive type thing. And she uh, has to choose whether she wants to live or die. And then she has all these memories come flooding back and it was really well done. I liked it. And then there's a cool lightsaber fight between Hayden Christensen and Rosario Dawson. It was really good. Um, I'm glad that they're giving Hayden another shot. Like, yeah. Uh, the, apparently he's going to. The trilogy did not give him 
you know, good lighting. Yeah. Know? Apparently he's going to be more involved now, though, like moving forward. Like the, <laughs> there's rumors of now of like a live action version of the Clone Wars cartoon, but like really condensed. You know, what? I wouldn't mind seeing a live action Darth Vader. Like, give us some of the history while he's. Did you like, watch Obi Wan? Yeah, that was, that was cool. pretty awesome, right? Yeah, like that made like just how dark they made Darth Vader in that, like grabbing Obi Wan and like he's putting scary. His face right into the fire. Yeah, like jeez. Yeah, and he's just like slaughtering like villagers left and right, just just to lure out any uh, Jedi sympathizers. It's like, yeah. dude. Wow. Yeah, that show was pretty violent for like, <laughs> even for Disney, man. Right, and then and then Andor was violent too. Andor was really yeah. good. Andor was good. So. But yeah, that's uh, that show's good. I'm enjoying it. Um, but anyways, what is an ISP outage? Uh, internet service provider. Oh, service. Oh, okay. Is that what Ron said? Yes. Yep. All right, he's gonna, out for the night. I'm gonna have to pull his uh, video from the cloud then. Uh, oh. Zencaster finally did the thing I suggested two years ago, which was like let you download the cloud versions if something really messes up. Oh wow, that t- took a long time. Yeah, well, they're not exactly on top of things, so yeah, <sighs> that's why. I- that's why for my job we uh, ended our Zencaster relationship and started with Riverside. So, uh, man, do we want, I mean, I know Leron really wanted to talk about this topic. Do we continue with it or should we do a different one? Oh, we could talk about the, uh, I mean, you probably already did with like Nintendo direct, uh, or the Nintendo pop block, the direct and I mean, we can talk about the Nintendo direct and the state of play if we want. We don't usually do that stuff on the show mm-hmm. really a lot. Yeah. I mean, just to throw my opinion, though, about this whole Xbox leak thing, I think that it's that was uncalled for. Like, I, I don't know who leaked it. The FTC did. The fact, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I've heard FTC most likely, but I've also heard possible, like, slip up of Microsoft lawyers. But either yeah. way, the way, the fact that, like, I do not like the, who, what's his name, Warren something? Like, He's literally just grabbing everything and just airing it out like dirty laundry. It's like, dude, Who, Tom Warren. Yeah, he's like, I, I don't know. I, I understand it's his job, but it's, it's like, I am literally gonna like take every little piece of information and just like be like, check this out, check this out, check this out. Oh look, I went through someone's underwear drawer. See what color underwear they have. You know, look at this fancy one. Oh my gosh, they have like granny the panties. Ones. It's like. Really, like, you're literally taking every little aspect and you're, like, just flashing it around so that everyone else could see. It's, Mm -hmm. to me, I think that is just obnoxious for ethics and journalism. Oh, I was excited. (laughs) I read the whole thing. No, I get Uh, get what you're talking about. Like, cool for us to kind of get our hands into some juicy details, but it's very unprofessional. Yeah. Yeah, like, that, that... That was a whole lot from Microsoft and a whole lot of spoilers that they would have liked to have told the public on their own Mm -hmm. and things that, you know what? Yeah, that's corporate talk between emails. Like you don't necessarily like want that to be aired out, but also a lot of this stuff was from 2020 and 2021. Um, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, Phil Spencer responded it to responded to it today. Uh, and said that he was saddened that all this stuff got leaked and that so much has changed and he's upset for his team because, uh, uh, you know, they put a lot of work into this stuff. Uh, there is a lot of stuff in them that's super interesting, though, like the all-digital Xbox Series X with double the uh, storage and uh, the chart that has, like, the handheld on it oh Um, the handheld i know i want it i want that so bad um and then like the new controller with haptics which i know they've been talking about doing for a while uh you know uh anecdotally at least um and then just all the different things that they're really trying to build the ecosystem uh the one thing though that like 
was that kind of sucked though was like the Bethesda timeline stuff, which a lot of that has moved obviously because they still had a uh, Starfield coming out in uh, fiscal year twenty one. So, uh, but they had like Indiana Jones, the next Doom game, which a lot of us thought that uh, um, Id was working on Quake, but now it looks like they're working on a prequel to Doom. Um, Indiana Jones is a trilogy, uh, which would be awesome. Uh, a lot of, you know, side projects or new projects or remasters, Fallout 3 and Oblivion remaster, which would be cool. Yeah, both of those were good games. I wouldn't mind going back to Oblivion again. Yeah. Um, you know what? I want to see a Morrowind remaster or remake. Yeah. That way, those of us who didn't, because Morrowind was only on the Xbox. It's backwards like, compatible, it's though, and it runs at 4K 60 mm-hmm. or 1440. But, like, I say bring it to a new generation, even though I heard it's like the gameplay is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> yeah, but they could update that, right? Yeah. I mean, if they, especially if they remade it. And uh, also, Morrowind recently came to Elder Scrolls Online, which I think Twice. that's. Yeah. They had the more, they had two expansions that involved Morrowind. Yeah. I believe. So I think a lot of people, I think that they were hoping that would satiate people. Um, but I, I'm, I'm really interested in the handheld, and I'm really interested in the all digital Series X. Uh, Is it the but round that would one? mean, yeah, yeah. But that, like, it, that console refresh would be like they would still have to sell the regular Series X because it's the only console they have with a disc drive, and you know, people still want physical games for some reason. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, man. That that was weird that I that they. I, I guess it was to keep the cost down if you want more storage, right? Like, I mean, that thing would be six, probably like $650 if you added the disk drive just to make some sort of money on it. But um, also, I wonder if they're going to experiment with a detachable disk drive since the disks like only transfer data to the hard drive to play off of now. Mm-hmm. And like you could very easily do that with a USB-C po- uh, cord and port and whatever. So It's like the 360 all over again with the HD DVD drive. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was awesome. I also love the little bit of honestly. It was like, what point did it really have um, when they when they quoted uh, Phil Spencer's email about it being like a big? Uh, I forgot what the exact term was, and I'm writing a boss rush banter that will go out tomorrow on it. Um, a big movement in in biz, in business uh, to acquire Nintendo if that were to ever happen. Mm-hmm. I laughed. I'm like, oh, yeah, that chain, that whole email chain was leaked. Yeah, um, you would really have to dive, dive deep into it. But it was like some director of content for Microsoft that wasn't involved in Xbox at all. Like because the, the way this came out was uh, this was at the time when the government was really involved in, you know, TikTok and they don't want Chinese go- people coming in and like, you know, invading people's privacy or whatever. And like they were talking about. Uh, s- that TikTok was going to have to sell to somebody. They just leak someone else's privacy. <laughs> I know. Uh, but they were telling them, telling TikTok that they were going to have to sell off the American side of, of the, the brand. And Microsoft wasn't even really interested. It was, but when it became for sale, they became interested because it was for sale. And I, th- I think Oracle ended up buying it or something, or I'm not, I don't even know if anything happened, but I know Oracle was involved in some way. Uh, and this email came from that thread of like, we should buy TikTok. And then the content and content director was like, what about any uh, consumer facing brands in the gaming space? Uh, what about Nintendo? And then, you know, Phil Spencer's answer was like, man, that would be a career highlight career move, or yeah. career move. But uh, obviously, Nintendo's not going to be easily acquired. So, you know, they're not really on our radar because obviously it's Nintendo, but. He said they, yeah. they were paying attention to what Nintendo was doing and he sees their future being off their own hardware at some point. But like, so was Xboxes. I mean, Microsoft is, I mean, they're, I mean, maybe not in the next 10 years or whatever, but they, all the Samsung, recent Samsung TVs have an Xbox Game Pass app that, you know, the ROG Ally exists. PC, they have all their games on PC. Like I said earlier, I played most of Beacon Pines on my phone, you know, uh, with the backbone and it played great their cloud stuff has definitely improved 
Uh, yeah, like when I saw that, I kind of, you know, kind of read it a little bit more and, and figure like, oh, this is going to be all out of context. So any additional news articles that that talked about it, I'm like, this is just for for fluff. But obviously, I wrote out a banter on it because, yeah. you know, but if anything, it just made me think of, man, I really hope that we can get Game Pass on the next Nintendo console because like that makes sense. From and I think they want to. Yeah, partnership right? perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think Microsoft wants Game Pass on everything. I mean, they've talked like about putting Microsoft doesn't have to do a console. They win. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yep. Microsoft talked about putting, you know, their first party games on PlayStation, but PlayStation doesn't want them. Right? There was that whole whole uh like when Halo 5 was about to come out on the Xbox 1, they were considering porting the Master Chief collection to PlayStation. And PlayStation didn't want it because they thought Killzone Shadowfall was going to take off and they were going to continue that. And they didn't. Uh, not that PlayStation has doesn't have their exclusives. Right. I mean, obviously, uh, they're an exclusive powerhouse. But um, yeah, they wanted to put they were even talking about putting Gears 4 on on PlayStation, you know, and, and I think and and the thing is, is like their messaging is, you know, uh you can play this game wherever Game Pass exists, right? They want it everywhere. They want it as many places as they can because Microsoft essentially is a subscription company, right? They're yes. a software yep. and subscription company. They're not a hardware company. I think if they could get away with uh, not making hardware, I think their hardware se- hardware sells too well to say we're done with hardware, you know? And so many people are invested now in the ecosystem that, like, if you took the Xbox away, like... Yeah. You're basically taking people's digital collections away at some point, you know, and uh, that's that's a hard pill to swallow this far in. That is true with uh, Xbox being one of the best uh, for preserving game history right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's I mean, the the Xbox series is still outpacing 360 and Xbox one in sales. So, I mean, they're not doing bad, but they're they are. They're a uh, PlayStation five is almost selling two to one, right? PlayStation announced 40, I think. I think from the estimate, uh, Xbox Series uh, is selling has sold 27 million units or something, uh, and 75 percent of that. That was an interesting stat too. Was 75 uh, percent of all Series consoles are Series S's, um, which hmm. I understand it's cheap. You can usually get it for around 220 bucks on sale a lot of the time. Uh, I saw one today that was uh, 250 bucks, and you got. What was I at Star maybe Starfield? Maybe it was two fifty or something. Oh. But still a pretty decent deal unless you want Game Pass and then you can just get it for fifteen. But uh, was it anywhere in the leaks as to why they might not have gone through with the handheld? Because I actually think they're if they w- made a handheld, it would be very successful. Aren't they trying to break into, for example, the mm. the Japanese market and they're really big on handheld. I know, and I think that's why they want to do that. I think that's the main reason, actually, is because uh, I don't see them doing good in Japan with the handheld. I mean, I feel like Japan likes their own technology versus yeah, the American made. That too, but I, th- I think, I think having a foothold in Japan, they need one, whether it's l- large or not. They need one, right? I mean, that's where they're doing the worst. Um, and uh, I think a handheld would, you know, Held. help with some of that. I think. I think the fact that Sony didn't make a proper handheld this generation after the success of the switch and seeing how successful it was even, you know, three and a half years after it came out right with the PlayStation five, like they should have been R and Ding some sort of handheld right then that could play, you know, at least your PlayStation four games that you own, you know, it's all about, like any sure, company yeah, that doesn't do a steam deck type, <laughs> oh, any company that doesn't do it, at least a steam deck style, handheld where like yeah it's not as high resolution it probably doesn't run at 60 frames a second but like all of your games are there yep. so you can play them i think is uh i think they're making a mistake and i think i do think especially based on this leak now i don't know if the rog ally like is their answer to this just partnering with them which i hate because it only does your pc library and pc game pass which you know it's fine but like if they were to do a handheld i I would I would be first in line for that. 
you know, because like 90% of the time I'm like, man, I wish I could just play something in handheld mode on my Xbox. That's like mm. <laughs> I could actually play, you know, because like a lot of time I, I wish I had that's like 99% of the reason why I want a ROG ally or a Steam Deck is to play Destiny in handheld mode, you know, or, uh, you know, like maybe when, you know, when Forza comes out, I can do a couple races or explore in, in Starfield or something, you know, and it kind of sucks that I either have to buy a $700 device that's, you know, PC only or use the cloud, which, you know, is only good for certain games, in my opinion. The uh, the other thing that was really interesting, though, was that controller. Uh, I hate that it's split colored. <laughs> it's so ugly. Uh, and the fact that it has the rubber grips also angers me. <laughs> uh, that's a personal thing, though, because the rubber is it's really likely that your controller is going to fly out of your hand and break your TV. Mm-hmm. That's almost happened before <laughs> with the first <laughs> Assassin's Creed uh, final boss. <laughs> hate... That was more intentional, right? <laughs> no, it just you know zipped out of my hand and hit my entertainment center, and I was five inches away from my TV and shattered. No big deal. Uh, I had anger issues back then. It's fine. Uh, where was I? Oh, the controller is really interesting. Uh, I wonder if they'll drop the regular controllers in price, which it kind of seems like they unofficially have because you can re- usually get them around 50, 45 to $60 yeah, instead of 70 they're regularly on sale now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just saw the white one was thirty nine ninety nine on Amazon. You know, is... I, 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 I always hate saying it out loud and admitting it, but now, like, having handled an Xbox controller, PlayStation controller, Switch, Joy-Cons, and Pro controller, I would say the most comfortable controller is the Xbox controller. Yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, I do like the D-pad on the Xbox One controllers better than the Series controllers, but that's such a nitpick that you don't even use the D-pad a lot of the times unless you're playing a fighting game, so... Uh, and if you're playing a fighting game, you're either playing, you're probably playing on PlayStation because that D-pad is like the best D-pad in my opinion. This gen, at least. Oh, um, yeah. You know, I, I hate the Switch controller weight. D-pad. I wonder if that's how it works because, like, the <laughs> Xbox controller is a very bottom-heavy controller. I know. Mm. I to to make it even more heavy, two of my controllers have the chat pad on it, not to use, just to make the controller he- heavier. Uh, but. Um, but then I can't use wire, wired headphones in it, so it's a give or take, I guess. Um, anything else about the uh, Xbox stuff that interests anybody? Also, the refresh for the Xbox Series S again uh, with all USB-C ports, which is interesting. No, I, I, have, I know we kind of were like, oh, we might not get into this topic, but I'm glad we still kind of got to talk about it while the news Mm -hmm. was still sort of fresh because on one hand i'm very sad for microsoft that all this leaked unnecessarily but you know just as a consumer of things in the video game industry you know i'm intrigued by all this i just Uh only wish the best for them i still hope that they can (laughs) i don't know just kind of pick up the pieces and still be successful with them yeah i in my in my opinion like their ecosystem is really coming together. Like Pat said, they do the best job with game preservation, especially their first party stuff, which is like hilarious because Xbox probably has the least important first party, except for like Halo and Gears, right? And I guess Forza, but you know, uh, and like Game Pass is such a great idea, even though Laron and I discussed this at some point, but, uh, PlayStation Plus Premium for a year is actually cheaper than Game Pass if you pay month to month. Uh, Game Pass Ultimate, I should say. Uh, Wait, even after the price increase? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's it's still yeah, like twenty five dollars cheaper a year. <laughs> yeah, but you're also getting not as good uh, stuff. Yeah. Like um, you, you get, I don't know. I feel like Game Pass has a better library than the PlayStation. See, I, 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 aside from like first party stuff being there, I would actually almost disagree. I mean, I think the extra tier on PlayStation is like top notch in terms of the games that I like to play, but I don't ever play my PlayStation. Uh, so a lot, a lot like uh, the only thing with Game Pass Ultimate though is that you get EA Play for free too, you know. So and does that also come with games, games with gold? I already forget. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Okay. You have to have the Game Pass Ultimate. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's on Ultimate though. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, and then obviously you get like the cloud stuff and the yep. PC and console and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think they're game. I think like especially if they made some sort of handheld. Like oh my gosh, they'd have like the ultimate ecosystem. But the games still need to show up. You know, like the major games that everybody talks about. Like I love the games that Xbox puts out, but like you know, when something like Psychonauts or Hi Fi Rush comes out, it's not like something that. PlayStation said, or even something like Pentiment 2 is like everybody's like, oh, those aren't real games or, you know, and then like after those three games come out, something like God of War comes out or Horizon or you know, and it's like, well, obviously those games are AAA bangers you know, in most respects and it's like, yeah the only one we've only two we've really had this gen were like Halo Infinite and Forza, which are both amazing games, but like Everybody got mad because Infinite didn't uh, it didn't have a roadmap for multiplayer, you know. Well, kind of to use your words from when you and Ed did that um, reaction to the latest Nintendo Direct, like it's just that those games that you mentioned, like Pentiment, they're games. They're I still I, you know, and they should be recognized as, as good games mm-hmm. that Xbox offer, but they're not the the tent pole games. Mm-hmm. I guess is what people were expecting. Yeah. Which, by the way, because Starfield was the latest one, are you done with Starfield right now? Or for oh yeah, I uninstalled it. Oh, I okay. Because I, 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 I remember you saying it's just not for you. Yeah. I actually think it's probably Bethesda's best game, per, like in Bethesda Game Studios' best game that they've done in a while, a, a long time. Uh, but I would agree. I just, I've just come to the conclusion that Bethesda RPGs are just mm-hmm. not my thing. The things I'm excited about from Bethesda, though, would be stuff from like id, like Doom is amazing. Uh, machine games wolfenstein if they nail indiana jones that would be amazing um you know arcane does some great stuff right i mean those are the games that are exciting to me from bethesda um though you know obviously that uh bethesda game studio is always going to be like their flagship studio and those games are going to be their flagship games and stuff um but yeah, I mean, Microsoft is just struggling to put tentpole games out, right? I mean, obviously, obviously now they have Starfield and Forza's coming out, you know, in, in like a couple weeks, which is pretty exciting. But then they don't have anything until uh, Towerborn in January, and then Hellblade will be next year. I think next year is really when you're going to start seeing some bangers pop out. You know, well, let's hope for some more sizzling trailers at the uh, Game Awards. I guess that's where we're going to see it next, right? Well, no, next is tomorrow. At yeah, Tokyo, Tokyo Game, Game Show. Show. But you think Microsoft will have big announcements there? They, yeah, they said this is their biggest show ever at Tokyo Game Show. Mm. Which means RPGs. Yeah, I, I think Sega is going to have a lot of stuff for them there. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, I've heard Bandai Namco is uh, working on a Killer Instinct game. Um, <gasps> you know, I, I think they're going to try to pull some... Uh, Japanese companies to put some of their games on Game Pass. Uh, Fantasia. Maybe we'll find out when uh, Square Enix is going to release Final Fantasy VII. I know a lot of people are thinking that. I don't think so. Uh, but a lot of people are thinking the, the Final Fantasy VII remake is going to be announced there for Xbox for Ooh, next year. Okay. Although it'll co- probably come out after Rebirth. And uh, I mean, here's the thing though Xbox people we're in the minority right of having multiple consoles every console right at some point uh or some version of the console but a lot of people only buy one console right and they'll stick to that console and if you buy an xbox and that's your only console you don't get access to these games you know um oh the other the other thing is that forspoken's uh uh exclusivity window is up next year too and a lot of people think that that's going to come over interesting okay uh but like seven final fantasy 7 on xbox would be huge for xbox fans you know yeah and that would definitely fill a gap uh, a need for uh xbox uh, right i mean playstation gets a lot of the jrpgs on game pass i know that's what people are thinking too um but the other thing that uh, the rumor is fantasian the uh mistwalker rpg on phones got raided for console in certain uh, regions. And a lot of people think that they're going to try to partner with Mistwalker again and bring that game to game pass. That would be awesome. Oh man, dude, I love Mistwalker. I wish they would do more than just mobile games now. 
Lost Odyssey was so good. Last Story was so good. Uh, you forgot Blue Dragon. I said the good games. It's fine. <laughs> Blue Dragon uh, was an interesting first attempt. It was all right. Um, the battles took too long. Yeah. Man, if you haven't played Lost Odyssey, though. Oh, that game's awesome. Oh, my gosh. It's the best Final Fantasy game that's not called Final Fantasy. Makes sense, though, because that whole team kind of <laughs> left Square Enix to go make their own thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see what they do. I doubt there's going to be anything meaningful there, unfortunately. But I, I would say there's going to be one or two surprises. I will be interested in finding out because, you know, that's more my forte. Yeah. Um, Speaking of awesome forte news, like a Dragon 8, Infinite Wealth, January 28th. I haven't played any of those games. I want to. How, but. I'm just shocked at how soon it's Yeah, it's very out. close. Yeah. Because we're still waiting for Gaiden, which is kind of a prequel to Infinite Wealth. In fact, if you beat uh, the Like a Dragon Gaiden, you unlock a demo that is like the prelude to Infinite Wealth. Oh, okay. That I didn't know. That and Now that makes the timeline even more like, okay, that's coming up. <laughs> Yep. You want to hear some other exciting news, Pat? Sure. The Bluey game is coming out in November. Oh, Dude. boy. That's exciting. I'm very excited. I'm more excited than any adult should be. I'll tell you. Uh, I don't know what Bluey's about, but apparently it's... A, it's, it's about a family of dogs who just, just goof around. Mm-hmm. Telling you, you should, you should watch... I bet if you watched five episodes, you would be hooked, Pat. I suffered through some bluey with with my son, and it's out of all the garbage that's out there, it's actually pretty good. I like it. Yeah, nice. it's uh, the creator described it as a cartoon for adults that their kids can watch. Because, like, when you yeah. really pay attention to those, yeah, they do have some mature. When I mean mature themes, I'm not talking uh-huh. about drug and sex. Mature meaning like just cerebral yeah. maturity. There's an episode about death. There's an episode about uh, the mom's sister can't have babies. Like, there's there's all kinds of weird stuff in Bluey if you're paying attention. Awesome, okay. Though. Yeah, I'll. Uh, you know, assuming it's a decent price, I might be willing to. It's forty check bucks. It out. Okay, that's a decent price. Book club. I have, to, I have. Yeah, dude, we could all play it together because it's four player. Oh my god. We're getting it on wow. Switch so my daughter can play. Like, uh, we're getting it for her for Hanukkah, and I feel like this is the mm. game that's going to hook her into video games. Thinking, thinking, thinking forward, you know. Oh. Anyways, luck there. enough of enough of that. Uh, I should put Bluey on the thumbnail. I already created the thumbnail, but I think we should put Bluey on it. I and like the theme, theme song. song. Yeah, yeah. I'm hearing it in my head right now. Mm-hmm. Mom, and then Dad. Okay, sorry. Riley always, so, Riley always wants to play keepy uppies, which is like keep the balloon in the air as long as you can. Mm-hmm. So I know, uh, I know we we're kind of like towards the end here of this uh, episode, but I'm just curious: uh, were there any announcements that you guys like particularly liked in the last direct or, uh, and uh, state of play? Um, I didn't really watch the state of play to be honest. I, I mean, they said third party updates and like, I mean, Hell Divers I think looks cool, but they're putting it out to die. I feel like in February, so. <laughs> no. uh, I I mean I am looking forward to the DLC to Resident Evil Four, but that's kind of like eh, you know whatever. Um, should we do a follow up? I think that comes out this week actually. Should we do a book club follow up, like half like halfway through October for that? We could, we could. Yeah. since we are since we did the uh, the campaign. I think it'd be cool, like mid month. How long is it? I mean, I don't, I don't know how long. It, it shouldn't is. be terribly long. I can't imagine more than like two or three hours. Yeah. Oh yeah, like a nice little mini one, it's, and it's very timely given October. Yeah. Spooky. Yeah, um, I mean, we we would just put it out for everyone for free because we usually do like a month early for book club, but you know this one's. There we go. Kind of, There's our spoopy. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Like legit spoopy, not like paranormal spoopy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As far as the Nintendo Direct, it's one of those directs where I think it's fine considering that the Switch is on its last legs, no matter when you think the next console will come out in the next two years. 
Um, it's definitely very Mario heavy. Makes sense given, you know, the movie and being an entertainment, co- whatever. Um, I'm excited for the remake for Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Um, um, I'm glad that Mario vs. Donkey Kong's coming out, although it might not be the game for me. Um, the Princess Peach game looks cool. I don't know if I'll eventually mm-hmm. buy it, but I just, I, I do, I appreciated the direction that they're going with it. Yeah, the stage show thing with the costume changes yeah. sounds like a really cool mechanic. It kind of almost reminds me of Puppeteer on PlayStation 3. Like the mm-hmm. stage show aspect, not the costume changes. Mm-hmm. But yeah. To the Tomb Raider 1 through 3 was interesting. <laughs> the um, wrong Tomb Raider games to put on there. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it, introducing, uh, introducing it to a new gen. Yeah, which really will make ever. nobody want to ever buy Tomb Raider again. <laughs> Hmm. I so they this there's supposed to be quality of life changes. We'll see. So, eh. I mean, I would have taken the the Legend trilogy over this. I mean, I think the Legend trilogy is really good for that era, but it's just me. Uh I mean, in terms of the direct I I I really feel like this was the first time, the first direct where I couldn't really pinpoint something for me. You know, I'm like Usually, if I see at mm-hmm. least two things for me, I'm satisfied with the direct. I'm not one of these idiots who's like, "Oh, the direct sucked." I'm not into every single game that they showed, right? I'm, uh, but th- I, I kind of went in with low expectations anyway because they did the Mario Wonder uh, direct by itself. So I was like, "Well, that's the that was the direct I thought was awesome because that's the my most anticipated game for the rest of the year." Uh, but like you know. I know Paper Mario, a lot of people are excited for. I'd never played it. Um, so I would be interested in checking it out, but I wasn't like waving the flag for it. Um, I've never played Mario RPG either. And I think that, you know, I will probably try to play that as well. I actually think the my favorite game shown was Luigi's Mansion, uh, because I think Dark Moon is the best Luigi's Mansion, but I, I hurt my I hands. I agree with you. It hurt my hands because it was on 3DS and I never finished it. But what I played, I thought, man, this is this is definitely a huge step up from one. I really liked three, but I I still think two is better. What else was even announced at the direct or shown, I guess? A couple RPG news. RPGs, yeah. um, they announced the Uden Chronicles uh, release date, which was pretty awesome. Uh, so that's coming out here soon. And then you also had the Unicorn Overlords by Vanillaware. That looked awesome, but it's just the title threw me off in the beginning. I'm like, huh? Yeah, yeah they. Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty interesting title. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm kind of excited for another Code Recollection, because I remember having the first one, but I don't remember a damn thing about that game mm-hmm. when I had it for the DS. So, uh, you know what? Give it another shot. That new Saga game looked really bad. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The Sagas, you have to really like nonlinear games to enjoy the Saga series. Yeah. Uh, I liked the first one, but also I was young and never played an RPG really before, except for the Final Fantasy game. So I was like, meh, whatever. Oh, um, and you know what? Donkey, Mario and Donkey Kong, or Mario versus Donkey Kong. Yeah. That, game looks- that game's my jam yeah that game looks rad uh i also liked that they had the prince of persia game there uh uh, just because like they have rarely shown there i don't know if they've shown switch footage yet uh but that game looks really awesome i'm like i'm really excited for that game um what else was shown at the state of play state of play the the shocker for me was tales of arise beyond the dawn oh Oh, yeah. yeah Like a DLC announced two years after the game came out. Yeah, I will be That's, playing that. I love Tales of Arise. I'm hearing that this is supposed to be 20 to 30 hours long. What? Yeah. Yep. Wow. I mean, from what I heard, they just decided to do DLC instead of a whole new sequel. So, mm-hmm. which would make sense for that game. I think a sequel at least, but the DLC will definitely, you know. Yeah, it's funny how they like described where it's placed on the game. They're like, it takes place after the final battle, but before the last cutscene. Yeah, yeah. It's very specific. Yeah, 
Well, they want to make sure you know you know. Uh, the main you know. character and the girl get married. So, at least it's not the Kingdom Hearts three DLC where you literally play through the other like the end of the game again with a different character. <laughs> that was so stupid, and it cost forty bucks. I know for that, and it was like three hours long. Yeah, you also got the digital soundtrack though on your console. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, Kingdom Hearts, man! The, it's a great series. Final Fantasy. Everybody should play Kingdom Hearts. One and two. It's alright. That's it. Yep. Birth by Sleep too. That game. That that game's awesome. This is the prequel. Oh, if only the Ron a... was here to talk about Kingdom Hearts, because yeah, I know. I love Kingdom Hearts. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's good. I'm excited for the Sora amiibo. Yeah, I know that thing's gonna sell out in like five seconds. Yeah. I wanted the Xenoblade ones, but I wasn't like dying to get them. Uh, I did pre-order the Zelda one. Did the Xenoblades actually pre-order now? No, they're no, sold they out everywhere. They sold out in like six know, I minutes. Would, I would have liked Noah, but I don't really need Mio. Yeah. I think there's more interesting characters than them. I mean, I know this is the Smash set, but isn't it? Yeah. No, those are the Xenoblade set. Yeah, that's, yeah, those two are Xenoblade. Man, all these amiibo, I can't keep track. Well, in the the Zelda ones, they they're just like November third, and then later on, you know, I look, you know, I found out what they were gonna do, and it was just gonna get you a sailcloth for each. And obviously, I still pre ordered them because they look amazing. And the only amiibos that I care about collecting are the Zelda ones, so I just did it mm-hmm. for that reason. But I can't help but feel really disappointed. That's all it did. I know that there's no DLC planned, which is also fine. So I figured if you're not having DLC and you're now pushing out these two amiibo now i kind of wish i don't know it gave something mm-hmm. other than a sailcloth yeah i only pre-ordered the zelda one i didn't get the ganon one zelda looks amazing um yeah i i'm still mad that they wouldn't let you use the wolf link as a companion i'm so really mad been about the that. best i'm so salty about that it was the it was the only way to play breath of the wild it was awesome but I digress. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked they didn't have like a. I mean, I guess Paper Mario was their one more thing, but I'm shocked they didn't have like a, a, a like at least a mediocre sized announcement in that thing. Um, right? It was very tame, very safe. I thought the I thought the shoe in for this was would be the Metroid Prime two and three. Mm-hmm. Games. I was. It was either going to be Metroid Prime Two and Three, or the Ze- the Zelda ports that I wish one at least one or the other. And I'm like, dang, neither. Okay. I feel like a. Well, I was going to say, you feel like a remake would be the last thing, but it was technically the last thing. I just a different remake. I still think the Zelda games are coming to Switch, especially if they're like, especially if the next console. Which, by the way, the code name was leaked in the Xbox filings. By the way. Uh, because they had some Activision Blizzard stuff in there, and they Activision was briefed in the fall of 2022 about this console, and because mm-hmm. Nintendo wants, I guess Nintendo kind of wanted Call of Duty on the Switch, and like that's when uh, what's his dumb face, Bobby Kotick, uh, oh. said like, yeah, we really missed the boat by not putting games on Switch, you know, because they could have made a lot of money, and I'm like, Call of Duty's an online game, probably uh wouldn't do very well do very well uh but yeah they were briefed and the code name is switch ng which Mm. tells me that it's essentially just a more powerful switch which we kind of thought that i think but there was something else i was gonna say what was i gonna say i got distracted you were about to talk about final fantasy no yes well you were talking about like um the Metroid 2 Prime 2 3 or oh, Zelda ports. Right. Zelda ports. I think the Zelda ports are coming to Switch be- it, because this console is going to be backwards compatible. You know, I feel like it, it, it's coming. I was just kind of hoping they would have mm-hmm. either that or Metroid Prime. It's see it's one of those things where, you know, that and the the showcase as well where I did not expect a lot at the either this time of year or just the console whatever. But I don't know, maybe it's the entitled gamer me where I'm like, come on, give me at least one zinger here. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of I kind of feel like, I mean, there's always some sort of direct at the end of the year, right? 
I I know Nintendo said, mm-hmm. especially when Furukawa uh, took over, he said he wanted one Zelda product a year. No, yeah. I thought there was only a, usually an indie direct at the end of the year. Usually the next yeah. Nintendo directs February, right? Um, kind of, yeah. Man, I don't know because I maybe it's not every uh, winter, but like. That's where Bayonetta and New Super Mario Brothers were announced. Was at the direct that was right after the game. Bayonetta Awards. was announced at um, uh, Game Awards. No, the the the. I thought the new one was also announced at Game Awards. The, the new one, the new one was. Oh, did they announce all three of them there? I I thought Origins was announced at. Uh, no, I mean the the ports of one and two. Oh. Two. I don't because they came together. Yeah, that I don't know. I know three and um, I don't remember. I don't even know what I did yesterday. Both. This knowledge, man. I've really. By the way, side tangent, and then we'll get out of here because we've been going kind of long. Uh, but like, but we didn't talk about Final Fantasy. What do you want to talk about Final <laughs> Fantasy for? <laughs> it was so freaking awesome, guys. I didn't watch it. Cloud on a Segway. Or, yeah. No. Are Segways no. cool again? I remember they were in like 2001. They are now that Cloud had one. Uh, doesn't the... Ned Sephiroth with his beautiful hair. You got that statue, which I'm excited for you. I got a hold of the collector's edition. The $350 collector's edition that comes with six or 19 inches of Sephiroth. Right after all 19 inches of Venom. Hmm. But, that's yeah. gonna oh b- between that and your Final Fantasy 16 thing that you have, it's the same type of statue too, the same maker. Nice, that's gonna be gorgeous, dude. It's gonna have the fires around the pillar. He's gonna have his wing extended and his sword. You know, oh, <laughs> there's not a lot of statues I would be willing to pay extra for in like a certain edition. But I gotta admit, when I saw the Sephiroth one, obviously I saw it way too late, so I just kind of like whatever. But I'm like that. That's worth the money. That's a Sephiroth statue for sure. I've still never played Final Fantasy VII. You know what? You should get on it. We should have a book club of Final Fantasy VII so that we can have a book club of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I don't. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. It's all right, Pat. We'll we'll just keep club of Final Fantasy VII intermission. We'll we'll just keep nagging him, and eventually he'll he'll break. It just takes time. Seven yeah. so good. And then they had the singer from the Honey Bee Club, and now we gotta wonder what's he doing there. Hmm. Yeah, the Honey Bee Club scene was like one of the best surprises in Final Fantasy VII remake. Well, that's it, the scene. Like, that's like the scene where. Game. That's the scene where, where Cloud, Cloud gets uh, turned into a uh, lady. Yeah. Yep. Fun. But it was stylish and cool. Man. Uh, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get out of here? Oh. No, I, I, I got my Final Fantasy. I'm good. <laughs> I'm it was good. a delightful chat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh... Sorry, Leron, you missed a good chat. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening to this episode of the Boss Watch Podcast. You can find new episodes every Monday. You get it a week early on Patreon. Uh, you can find all of our content on bosswatch.net. Pat, Stephanie, appreciate your time this evening. Uh, yeah. I, want to, I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. Until next time, we love you. Goodbye. Bye. If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support.